guys, it's Bryn, and this, if you can't tell by the title or the fact that you clicked on this video, um, this is my 200th video that I've ever filmed and edited and uploaded onto this channel. And I don't know, 200 might not be that significant of a number, um, but it's a big number, and it's one that I wanted to celebrate and just acknowledge and include you in because... To be honest, I don't know that I expected to be doing this this long. You know, we'll get into this uh, later on in the video, but I just kind of started doing these videos for fun, and I didn't expect to stay doing them this long, I guess, or I just never, like, envisioned that I would still be doing this at 23. So I don't know, I just wanted to take a minute, take a step back from my normal uh, grind of a video every week, and just talk about how exciting this is that we've gotten this far together and also just include you guys in the video and do something fun um, and a little more relaxed. It's currently snowing outside. I'm very excited about it. If I had the option, I would have filmed like right in front of the window so you could watch it snowing while you listened to me, <laughs> but that would have made for a terrible lighting situation. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to enjoy the snow by myself. Um, but you can imagine that it's happening outside your window or maybe it is happening outside your window. It, that could possibly be the case. I'm here, I'm cozy, I'm watching the snow, I've got a cup of tea, and I'm excited to answer your questions. And uh, also there's a little over 900 of you now, which is crazy. I can't believe it. Never expected to be here. Uh, never expected to still be doing this. Um, but here we are. So let's just, you know, enjoy it and acknowledge it and have fun today in this video. So I asked you guys in some of my previous videos um, and on my Tumblr and all over the place to send me in your questions. So I'm going to be answering those today. It's really funny, you'll notice. Um, I mean, I picked out like 10 of my favorite, most interesting questions. Um, but all of the questions that I get, it's hilarious. They fall into like three different categories. There are questions about like my videos and me filming and things like that. Um, there are questions about Taylor Swift related things and there are like questions asking for advice and these are the three things that you guys always find questions about and I love it. It's amazing. You know, I feel like no other channel on YouTube just has this unique mix of people and I love that. So we're gonna start off easy and get a little harder as we go on. Are you doing Vlogmas this year? The short answer I think is gonna be no. I did it last year kind of. I didn't do it like traditionally like you're supposed to do it where you vlog and you edit and you upload a video every single day um, up until Christmas but I did it like every two or three days or so I would post a video and I've just come to the conclusion that vlogmas is for people who uh, make videos full-time because my life just isn't that exciting it doesn't get more exciting when December rolls around mainly because like I'm still working and I'm still doing boring things and it's just not that fun to watch. Like, yes, I get a Christmas tree. Yes, I decorate a little bit. Um, yes, I'm shopping for gifts and stuff, but it's not enough to like make it worthwhile, I don't think. I might post more videos come December um, just because I might want to vlog a little more. Uh, I might just have more ideas of things that I want to uh, make videos about, but I'm not going to do a video every day. That's way too much work for me when I already have a full-time job. <laughs> so short answer, no not doing Vlogmas, um, but we'll definitely be taking advantage of the fun, festive Christmas holiday season because it's my favorite. I love it so much. I'm so basic, but it's the truth. <laughs> you mentioned that you finished your novel. How do you feel about it and would you ever consider publishing it? So if you're new here, um, I did make a bunch of vlogs last year in November for NaNoWriMo and I was trying to write a book. It did not happen over uh, November. However, it did happen in the months following. I think I wrote about 75,000 words-ish. Would I ever consider publishing it? The answer would probably have to be no. Um, I think I wasn't writing this book as, you know, something that I wanted to write. I was writing it just to kind of prove to myself that I could do it. And at the end of it, like, I, it was mostly that I was just excited to finish it and excited to say that I'd done it. Um, but now, going back and like reading over it, I'm like, I don't think this is something that I want to uh, continue to spend time with, but I like knowing that I can put in the time and I can get to that goal if uh, I ever find a reason to, which makes me feel a lot better about myself 
I'll be honest, it's a good ego boost, <laughs> if nothing else. Do you talk about Diary of a Princess with any of your in real life friends, family, coworkers, etc.? Again, the answer is no. Um, <laughs> when I started this, it was very much a thing for me. I didn't care about people watching it, and I was adamantly against anyone I know knowing about it. I had one friend that I told, um, and still to this day is the only friend that I've told. Um, I do have friends that have found out. Um, I do have random people that I know that have found out. Um, some of my family members have found out. None of them from me actually telling them. So I don't know how that happened. But yeah, I'm very much, I'm just like a very private person in general, which is weird that I make videos because I'm such a private person. But it's kind of my way of like being social without actually having to be social. Like I'm talking to you, but in reality, I'm staring at a camera right now and also staring at my own face. And I'm not actually talking to anyone in this room at the moment. And I'm very introverted, so I feel most like myself when I'm by myself. So when I talk to people or when I have friends or when I'm with family, like, I never feel 100% comfortable and I never feel 100% myself. To me, this is like one of the best ways to really like connect with people and, you know, have people actually understand who I am without having to be in a room with me. Um, I'm a very like, I almost want to say like a chameleon type of person. Like when I'm with friends, I tend to, I don't want to say become different people, but I am slightly different around everyone that I'm with, which I think is why I feel most like myself when I'm alone, just because I don't have anyone that I'm trying to like empathize with or anything like that. It, it sounds super weird if you're not that kind of person. I'm sure there are some of you that are watching and you're like, yes, that's me. And some of you that are probably like, that makes literally no sense. But the short answer is no, I don't talk about it because that was never my intention with this. I try to keep it like as personal and to me as I can and not think about the fact that people I know may actually be watching this. That's weird for me to think about. If I start thinking about it, I'll put up a wall and I'll stop posting videos altogether. So I, it's better for me not to think about it. <laughs> Which social media platform is most valuable to you and why? Which is least essential? Um, I find this question interesting because I think about social media a lot and I feel like my relationship with social media has changed quite a lot. To me now, my easiest answer is YouTube is my favorite, mainly because I think Social media, when I was younger, used to be a way for me to connect with people that I knew. As I get older, um, I find I use social media much more to connect with people that I don't actually know in real life. It's my way to see and understand and listen to people who I would just like never come across in real life, whether it's because they live states or countries or oceans away or they just lead completely different lifestyles to my own or whatever it is. I just, I love being able to listen to them and to see what their lives are like and feel like they're my friends even though we could probably never actually be friends um, unless I lived somewhere else or they lived here or whatever it was. I feel like YouTube is the best way to do that, to connect with those people because you get the biggest chunk of people's life, if that makes sense. Like, you know, Instagram is photos, Twitter is 280 characters, and there's only so much you can do with that, where YouTube is kind of like, obviously it's still only a chunk of someone's life, but it's such a bigger portion, and it just feels much more real to me. Like, even if I'm sitting in my bed watching someone at Disney World or whatever it is, like, I feel like I'm a part of their life, and if I start commenting and I reach out to them, then they feel like I'm a part of their life. To me, that's like the most positive um, outcome from social media that we're ever gonna get. So on the flip side, the least valuable things to me tend to be um, the social media platforms like Facebook or Snapchat or things that are kind of more meant to connect with people that you know. And to me, that's just like, it's unnecessary because as I get older, like I'd so much rather have dinner or have a phone call or te even text some of my friends than to send Snapchats back and forth. Like, it's just not as valuable to me. Why did you start making videos? You talk about being shy, struggling to make friends, etc. So how do you feel comfortable putting yourself on camera? I'm sure I've talked about this uh, in the past, but I started making videos when I was in college. Um, I was an English major, so I was reading a lot, I was writing a lot, but a lot of my creative energy was either going towards school or towards things that just 
didn't go anywhere so like I would write things or I would have you know ideas but you know it's not like I had a business or like I had a social media following or any of those things to where I could share it with people so it was kind of the first time where I watched YouTube videos and it kind of clicked that this is something I could do if I wanted to um, and it became kind of my way to create things and immediately put them somewhere where I could get immediate feedback from people so looking back like I really needed that um, just because deep down I'm a perfectionist like I will work on things forever and never be done with them and I'm also just all over the place creatively like I just like to do so many different things at a time and I can't focus on one thing um, for super long so the fact that a I've been able to keep up with this YouTube thing for so long and also just that I've been able to do it and do it every week and then just move on to the next week and not think too much about what I've done in the past is just kind of it's something that I really needed to do and that's been super beneficial for me um, mentally and creatively and all of those things again like I said earlier I, I never expected people to watch it I mean like I thought people would watch it but I never expected to get to the point where people would subscribe and stick around and watch every single video and reach out to me that they watched a video and that it helped them or it spoke to them or whatever it was like I just never expected that and also that I when I started making videos I was just copying other people that I watched for the most part and now I really feel like I've gotten to a point where I make things that I want to make and they feel like me it's kind of a big deal <laughs> In terms of um, being comfortable being on camera, again, it's just come with time. Like when I first started, I'm sure I don't go back and watch those videos, but I'm sure I was so awkward. Um, I know I was so awkward. I'm still awkward. <laughs> being on camera for me is a lot like talking to myself and I'm very good at talking to myself. Um, <laughs> so it feels natural in a weird way. I mean, like it's not natural to sit on my bed um, and look at myself in a viewfinder and just talk but being able to talk to you without actually having to like look you in the eye and be in the same room and be worrying about like are you comfortable do you need water do you need to use the bathroom when are you going to leave I'm getting tired are they going to leave soon um, am I making them feel uncomfortable am I being too obvious uh, that I want them to leave like these are the things that these are the things that go through my head when I'm like in a space with people and I can't stop my brain long enough to enjoy being with people or it's like a very few number of people that I'm like comfortable with. So I love that I can just sit here and be myself and do this and feel like I'm talking to you without actually having to go through uh, that stressful, like socially anxious um, exercise <laughs> of being around people, if that makes sense. Yes, I'm shy. Yes, I'm socially awkward, but that makes this easier somehow. Your going to concerts alone video has been your most popular video for a while. How do you feel looking back on it or any of your past videos? Yeah, if you didn't know, I made a video, I want to say two-ish years ago, might be more than that, um, about going to concerts alone. And, you know, when I made that video, I knew that there would be people in a similar situation as me that I would be giving advice to. I did not think it would be such a big group of people, but it's kind of amazing to me because I get comments on that video still every week, years later. Um, some of them positive, some of them negative. But it's just crazy, like, I, there are some videos I've made that I thought, okay, yeah, people are gonna love this, like, this is gonna be a big video, and it gets almost no views, and then there are videos where I'm like, you know, yeah, this might be helpful to, like, a handful of people that, you know, decide to search for and watch it, um, and those videos get really big, and I don't know how it works. <laughs> As a rule, I don't really look back on past videos. I try to be more of, like, a future forward thinker rather than a past thinker. Um, I don't really like regret or anything like that so it's easier for me not to look at older videos just because like you know if I posted them that means that I liked them at the time and I enjoyed them at the time and they were right for me at the time. With that video in particular I get a lot of comments uh, of people saying that like these tips are so stupid like just go to concerts alone it's not a big deal no one cares it happens all the time. Every time I see that I'm always like I wonder if I just didn't express myself correctly in that video or people just don't understand what I was trying to say. But it's definitely something that I still think about and still rings true for me. I'm very socially anxious um, and I know that it's like 100% in my own head. Like I know if I go to a concert alone, 
no one's gonna care. Everyone's worried about their own experience, everyone's worried about themselves, everyone's worried about who they're going to see, no one is looking at me sitting by myself caring what the hell I'm doing. I'm totally aware of that. But having like anxiety is 100% up here and it's something that you cannot shake no matter how much you know that no one else cares. I always kind of explain it and this is like a weird example, but like if you were like me as a kid, <laughs> You would be so stressed to even like, you'd be at McDonald's and you'd want ketchup for your fries, but you would be so stressed to go up to the counter and like ask for ketchup. This is a weird anecdote, it might not even be true, but I'm just using it <laughs> to express my thoughts. I would be afraid to go up and ask for ketchup, is what I'm saying. But if I'd been with a friend or with, you know, a family member or whoever, who was afraid to go up and ask for ketchup, in two seconds flat, I would be like, hold on, I got you, I will go up to the counter and I will walk up to the counter and I will ask for ketchup for my friend and will not think twice about it. To someone else, to the person at the counter, the scenario is exactly the same. It's me going up and saying, can I have ketchup? And then and them giving me ketchup. But for some reason in my brain, those two scenarios are completely different. And knowing that someone else wants it and knowing someone else is afraid to ask, I will get up and I will do it for that person in no time and will not think twice. But if it's for me, I will stress about it so much that I will not do it. And to me, that's what I was kind of trying to convey in that concert video. And what I try to convey all the time when I talk about anxiety is just that, like, it's all about how you think about it in your head. And, like, yes, those tricks that I talked about probably sound stupid to someone that doesn't understand that. And they're like, you know, why would you go to a concert and pretend you're doing this? Or why would you do that? That doesn't make sense, that just, that's dumb. I'm like, yes, but it all depends on how I'm thinking about it and that's what makes the difference. I, I've thought for a while about making a follow-up uh, video to that video, but I'm, I'm not really sure what that would be, so I don't know if I will ever do that, but I have not gone back to like double check what I said <laughs> because I feel like I just don't need that in my life, you know? What's your favorite video you've ever filmed? I don't know about favorite, um, but the one that I'm happiest to have made would either be the going to concerts alone video or one that I made this summer um, where I talked about how I struggled to make friends. And I say those two because those are the two that I've received the most feedback from people in terms of them saying like, this really helped me, or you said exactly what I've been wanting to say, or you know, you, I felt like you were speaking directly to me and this helped me so much, whatever it was. Um, and it's just, it's kind of all I can hope for from these videos. Like, I, I don't know, when I get comments like that, um, especially when it's something like in, you know, the struggling to make friends video, it was just a vlog. It wasn't something that I planned to talk about, but it was something that I was just feeling at the time. Um, both of those videos are just things that I was going through and that I thought, you know, if I'm dealing with this, someone else is probably struggling with this. So why don't I just talk about it and hopefully help someone else. And just the fact that it actually did help people or that people have reached out to me and told me that time and time again. Um, it just feels really good. I love that because I'm just being honest. <laughs> like All I'm doing is talking about myself and talking about my life um, and explaining the things that I'm thinking about and the fact that we can connect over that. I just love that a lot. All right, now we're moving on to a couple of advice questions. Um, someone asked, what to do when my small friend group that I'm not super close with asked to hang out but there's alcohol involved and we're all underage. I'm not interested, but I feel like I'm a wimp if I'm the only one who doesn't want to drink as a 17 year old. Your pressure's real, man. Um, and this is something, it's easy for me to say now as, you know, a 23 year old who, I'm not old, but like, I'm older than I used to be. Something that I've just learned over the years is that the most important thing of everything is to be yourself. And if that means your friends are doing something and you're not comfortable with it, then like, don't do it. And I know that's easy to say, like, it's not so easy to do when you're in a situation where you're feeling uncomfortable or, you know, where you feel like you should be doing something or whatever it is. Um, but I had those, you know, scenarios similar to that kind of, um, when I was growing up, just where I would have a group of friends who would be so interested in something and I just wasn't. And I always felt left out because of it. And I think my coping mechanism, one was just to find things in my own personal life um, that I enjoyed by myself. I would also just 
find other friends who wanted to do the things that I wanted to do. I didn't have big groups of friends when I was a teenager, but I do remember having like a few different friends. None of them were like the perfect friend by any means. I feel like there's this ideal where we're all in like a friend group and all of our friends are like our best friends and we all get along 100%, but that's just not realistic. Like for me, I had maybe like four or five friends that I went to for different things. Like if I wanted a chill, relaxing evening watching movies, I would call one friend. If I just wanted to laugh all night and go to Walmart and hang out and just have a great time, I had another friend I would call. So I think just like don't be afraid to make other friends that like to do other things that you like to do that maybe some of your other friends don't enjoy doing. Like if you love bowling, none of your friends like bowling. Find another friend that you can go bowling with and it doesn't mean you can't be friends with your other friends It's just that when you're really feeling, you know, like you want to go bowling You have a friend you can call or when you know your other group of friends is out drinking or whatever they're doing And you're not comfortable with it. You can call someone else and do something different How do you try to make yourself feel less alone because I know we both aren't the greatest at the making new friends or socializing part of life <laughs> true um I don't know, this is something I'm struggling with a lot at the moment, and I wish I had an answer, uh, but I don't. Again, I think being able to make videos and doing things online and meeting people this way has been extremely helpful for me, even if it's not something that's super sustainable or that's there all the time. Um, it has helped me a lot. Again, I really struggle to make new friends. I struggle to find like lasting um, friendships with people. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. I'm here with you. I'll tell you when I figure it out, man. I don't know. I'll have better advice for you uh, by like my three or four hundredth video. <laughs> All right, last question. Let's do a fun one. A favorite song from each of Taylor's albums. Um, this is Taylor Swift for any of you who are new here. We're big Taylor Swift fans around here. All right, so from Taylor Swift album, half of me wants to say Teardrops on My Guitar because that was the first Taylor Swift song I ever heard and half of me wants to say tie together with a smile, but I'm gonna say teardrops. I'm gonna go with teardrops my guitar. It's a classic, I love that one. For fearless, I'm gonna go with you belong with me. I think. Okay, speak now, this is gonna get harder. Um, speak now, I am going to go with my favorite as Dear John. It's the first song I ever learned how to play on guitar, so I feel like I should pick that one. For Red is easy, All Too Well is my favorite, um, don't even have to look at that one. 1989 is really hard. Part of me wants to say Shake It Off just because it's like my favorite song to listen to when I'm in a stressful situation. Like if I'm in the car on my way to something that I'm nervous about, I will 100% of the time play Shake It Off and feel better about life. So even though I love Blank Space, even though I love style, even though I love, um, no this love, crap. I'm gonna say a tie between Shake It Off and This Love. I can't pick one, it depends on the day. 1989 is my favorite Taylor Swift album, so I'm gonna struggle the most with that one. For Reputation, I am going to say my favorite is Delicate. I am a hardcore track five girl. As you'll notice, I think I picked track five for most of them. If you don't know what that means, I apologize, uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> Runner up for reputation would definitely be call it what you want or I did something bad But I think delicate is gonna be like the long-term favorite. I'm thinking way too hard about this <laughs> This was the hardest question of the whole Q&A. All right guys. This has been my 200th video I hope you enjoyed it wasn't crazy exciting, but I had fun also last things last every year If you've been around here for a while, I do a survey just to kind of understand what you guys uh, like from my videos, don't like from my videos, what you're interested in at the moment. It's my best way to kind of just get an understanding of um, who you guys are, what you enjoy, uh, that sort of thing, get to know you a little bit better. So I'll leave a link to that in the description if you wouldn't mind taking that. I think it's only 10 questions or so. Should not take you a very long time. But if you're subscribed or if you watch my videos at all, I would really appreciate you um, taking that and letting me know a little bit more about you. Since, you know, I divulged so much of myself in this video, I would love some reciprocation. All right, I think that's gonna be it, you guys. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great holiday season and enjoying this time of year as much as I am. And I will see you next week with another video. Bye, guys.